BS Free Witchcraft is a production of the Nerd and Tie Podcast Network. Nerd and Tie produces podcasts ranging from actual play to true crime, and you can find more at nerdandtie.com or join our Discord by going to nerdandtie.com slash Discord. Welcome to BS Free Witchcraft, your monthly guide to the modern witchcraft movement. Mine's slot of the usual, well, bullshit. I'm your host, Trey Dorn. It's April of 2024, and, uh... Before we get started, I'm going to do a little bit of plugging. I know this can get annoying, so we'll make it fast. We'll make it fast. First and foremost, my comic, Peregrine Lake, is debuted. It started. Um, For those of you who don't know, um, I did comics for like a decade. (laughs) Um, (laughs) I just did this comic unconventional, ran for 10 years, uh, and uh, that's what I used to mostly be known for instead of podcasts. Uh, But... For the last, like, five years, I've mostly been known for podcasts instead, and so that's uh, how that all got forgotten, but by people who never knew. But um, Peregrine Lake was supposed to start back in 2020, and uh, because of the pandemic, I ended up with some writer's block and artist block. And while the artist block has never uh, kind of resolved itself, my writer's block has, (laughs) which is why um, I started working with my friend Ethan Flanagan. And they uh, are taking over, they took over doing the art for the comic. So I'm still writing it. It's still my comic script. Like, it's still my comic scripts. Uh, but they are doing amazing artwork for it right now. And I think, honestly, what they're doing is far beyond what I ever would have been able to pull off on my own. Because um, if you're going to replace yourself in a job, replace yourself with someone significantly better than yourself. So that's what Ethan is. So. Uh, it's it's brand new. It just started now. Like when this episode hits the Patreon, only the first strip is going to be out. And when this hits public, only the first two strips will be out. So because it updates weekly, but you can read it for free at peregrine-lake.com. It is a Northwoods Gothic comic, which is I think the best way to describe it. It is it's it's fun, and you should read and enjoy it. The other thing I want to plug is uh uh. For those of you who have been watching the show, I've been plugging my book, The Witch and the Rose. My um, first novel came out uh, earlier this year, and I said when it came out that it was the first in the series. Well, I'm excited to announce the second book in the series, Bloody Damn Right, right spelled R-I-T-E, is coming out June 11th. Now, I don't have a nice physical book to hold up for you, but it will be on both paperback and Kindle, and you can pre-order the ebook. The Kindle ebook right now, um, yeah, you can pre-order it right now if you want. And I'll put a link to that in the description of the episode. And yeah, I, it's for those of you who don't know, um, they are it's a contemporary fantasy series set in a uh, northern Indiana college town. And it's fun. Um, it's, it's, it's fun. And the second one, Bloody Damn Right, that's going to have vampires in it. So, yeah. <laughs> But enough talking about me and the dumb things I'm making. Let's get to the actual episode that you ostensibly opened this up to hear. Right? You know, it... Yeah. So the first thing I want to talk about is not really the main focus of the episode. But uh, it's just a thing that has happened in the last few weeks. And I did want to... I feel like it would be remiss not to touch on it. And that is back on um, March 20th, uh, Bennett Brown, um, a psychiatrist, uh, passed away in Lauder Hill, Florida, while on vacation. Uh, He was 83 years old. He fell and died of complications of that fall, as far as I can tell. And you may be asking yourself why on this Witchcraft podcast, Trey is bringing up this random psychiatrist. Well... (laughs) Those of you who (laughs) may have put this together or know who he is because you were alive in the 80s and 90s, uh, Brown was a major contributor to the Satanic Panic. Um, He is obviously not the originator of the Satanic Panic, but he he was a prominent psychiatrist who uh, helped found what is now the International Society for the... uh, study of trauma and disassociation 
and that's a professional organization that has thousands of members. But it's from that platform, uh, Brown helped kind of launch out into what he's most well known for these days, and that is uh, claiming that in dozens of cases, uh, he helped patients recover memories of ritual satanic abuse, either as victims or perpetrators. He wasn't the only psychiatrist to make this claim, and again, he's not the originator of the satanic panic, but he had such a large platform and such a lar like such a prominent professional reputation that it really pushed this narrative so much further into the mainstream. And as we all know, the satanic panic was full of bullshit, right? It's there were not secret cults abusing children in the name of Satan. It all of this was nonsense. And the recovered memories were not real because it turns out it's really easy to recover a fake memory. So, as of March 20th, this man has finally left the Earth. And I say, good riddance. Oh my god, that sounds like really cold. I do feel bad like this. This is a human being who had family members who I assume loved him. I don't know much about his like personal life and I don't want to make any judgments there, but what he did was irresponsible. Like the, the what he did in his like he used a platform of authority and power to perpetrate Things that have harmed human lives. And so pardon me if I do not mourn him. But yeah, so I wanted to mention that. <laughs> it's not really the focus of this episode, but he's such a prominent figure in, in something that affects that affected so many members of our community, even though we weren't even, like, the reason for it to happen. Because, you know, what's interesting is that a lot of stuff with satanic panic and fear about, uh, satan like, witches from the Christian right and things like that is that it's not actually about the actual like actual witches most of the time it's not about us and i think we need to be reminded of that let me explain what i mean about two years ago pastor greg Locke made a, a big splash in the media he was doing book burnings i mean he's probably still doing i don't know what he's doing i try not to pay attention to the man but he was doing book burnings and he most famously in a clip that went viral on TikTok and YouTube and other places, ranted, went on this extensive rant about witches. He went on this massive rant about witches. And it became a meme on TikTok to dunk on this guy, to make videos responding to this clip, to like... Like, oh, you don't know about real witch, you know, it's like, and, and or defending witchcraft, you know, in response to this guy's video or making fun of him or doing all this stuff. And almost to a T, almost all of these responses missed something really important. This wasn't about witches. He was saying witches. He was talking about that but this wasn't in response to anything anything having to do with witchcraft and his intention wasn't to go after any real witches his intention was to control his congregation his intention was to use this fear of people with 
in his group, to create distrust in his group, to consolidate his power over it. It was about utilizing power over those people. And it's just, it's such an easy thing to forget. And we see this again, and I was reminded of this, you know, with the eclipse that just happened, there was a meme going around saying that witches were going to uh, hex Christians during the eclipse. And I, of course, made, you know, some comment about it on Tumblr or something. I made a joke about it, but, like, that post was not about, like... I am 100% confident the person who made that post had no no belief that, like, members of the modern witchcraft movement were organizing to go hex... Like, they didn't think that. But they could control people by making them scared of a threat. That there's someone conspiring against them. And I think it's so easy for us to forget... That that's, that's really what's happening when we see the right come after witches. It's not about, it's almost never about, about witches. Like, do you, I don't honestly think that the majority of these people give, they don't see a difference between a Wiccan and an atheist. They don't see a difference between those two groups. They don't conceptualize them as as separate. And we become scapegoats sometimes. Like Modern witches can definitely be hurt by these words, right? Um, when, when you drum up people, when you drum up a, a mob to go get the other and there is someone there who happens to, in name, resemble the other that you've described. Like, obviously. That, that is a, the w real witches will get hurt. But. Shit ain't about us all the time. Like. But we want to make it about us. Or at least a lot of people in the witchcraft movement want to make it about them. Like, the Salem witch trials are like the most famous example, right? And I don't know how many times we have to tell people that there were no witches in Salem. And in fact, the entire thing where people started calling themselves witches wasn't really a thing until long after Salem was done. You know, folk magic goes back hundreds of years, thousands of years, to the beginning of people, right? Folk magic goes back to the beginning of people. People calling themselves witches, really, um, like, using that as a self-described term, as a widespread thing, maybe, prior to this, maybe one or two kooks did something like that, but, like, most people would have been deeply offended at being called a witch. It wasn't really a thing where people started calling themselves witches until the 20th century. Yet, yet, Time and time again, modern witches like to claim the credit, like like to make historic witch hunts about themselves. They they really just they want to make it about us. They want to hold on to that legacy of these victims, these victims who who would have been disgusted if you would call were disgusted when they were called witches. Because, I mean, first off, the word has a completely different connotation back then. But more importantly, these were people who were victims. They were, they were members of these communities. They were Christians, most of them, and or they were Jewish in many cases. But in any case, none of these people were really witches. The paranoia about witches, the drummer was, was used for many different motivations, be they, you know, um, political power, be they financial gain, be they bored. Because 
sometimes uh, when you exist prior to the invention of 99% of what we have today is media, uh, you get bored and malicious and start accusing people of witchcraft as entertainment. Children are vicious. But anyways, in none of these cases was it about witchcraft. These were victims of actual atrocities and things. But people in the modern witchcraft movement, they want to make it about us, man. They want to be the daughters of the witches they couldn't burn. I hate that phrase because you're not. <laughs> and you have more in common with the oppressors than you did the victims. Um, but that's that's this thing, right? Like, there is this deep ingrained need in so many members of the modern witchcraft movement to make this about them, right? Be they historical, be they modern, be it anything. And while it is true that modern witches can sometimes end up in the crosshairs of the people who are are using witchcraft as like their 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 byword their their key phrase it's they're not really any more in danger than anybody else and in some cases they're in less danger than from these people with their witchcraft accusations they're in less danger than other people if they happen to be white if they happen to be straight if they it's like yet and I'm going to say this phrase and I apologize but it's the best one in it's the best English idiom I can think of right now there are so many modern witches who want to climb up on that cross and be the persecuted victim because of the, they want to make it about them. And I think I know why. Now, let's be clear. There are people who actually are oppressed, who actually do experience forms of oppression in our culture, right? And technically, being non-Christian is a tiny one of them for just the general thing of being non-Christian. I'm not talking about, like, being a member of a uh, faith that is often specifically discriminated against, like uh, Judaism or Islam, um, you know, because anti-Semitism and Islamophobia are, like, genuine, real things. Uh, but, like, technically anything that isn't Christian has some level of, of not. But, like, the, the I'm not talking about, like, like a person who's a minority or a person who is uh, that being like that oppression is real. <laughs> but I think a lot of this need for like witches to feel like they are oppressed comes often from former Christians who become witches. And, um, and you see this in atheists, too. It's not just it's not just us. It's not just in our community. You see this in the atheist community a lot, too. Um, from former Christians who uh, have not deconstructed their religious trauma. Because one of the main things you see a lot in Christianity is the need to portray themselves as the victims. Like, you see this a lot with the religious right and, like, where the the people they want to... The people who... They claim that they're not the ones with power, that the people they want to oppress are the ones who actually have power. Um, like you see this a lot in like trans anti transgender rhetoric and things like that. Um, it's their whole anti woke that oh they're being so you know they can't say the word. Um, it's really built in to this like Christian mindset that even though they are the dominant religion in our culture, so much so that um, it is hard to <laughs> you cannot totally divorce yourself of cultural Christianity in America um, unless you like grew up in really specific uh, religious groups the the cultural Christianity and the cultural Christianity to some degree seeps into everything 
because it's built into our public life. It's built into our school systems. It's built into our, like, it's everywhere. But they still want to feel like they are the victims. And you see this a lot with the same people who would perpetrate the satanic panic. And so people come out of these experiences into witchcraft. And now that they are no longer a member of the Christian church, they still have those programming and attitudes. You see this also in some of the purity culture within the witchcraft movement. It's it's this completely, com- like, they've done zero deconstruction. <laughs> it's just, they have done zero deconstruction of their religious trauma. And I think, really think that's where a lot of it comes from. Now, I'm not saying it's where all of it comes from, because I think everybody wants to be a little shiny special thing uh, deep down inside. And I mean everyone when I say that. I'm including myself. There's a part of me that wants to be special. I'm not going to lie about it. I'm not going to let that control my life or dictate my actions, but I accept that that's a part of me. And when you see someone going out there saying, hey... Those are the bad guys, and you think you resemble what they're describing. You're going to try to make it about you. And even though you might be affected by it, you're not their target. When a preacher gets up in front of their congregation and says that there are witches in the congregation. That's not about witches. It's about the congregation. I'm trying to control and manipulate them. And I'm not saying you shouldn't pay attention to these people. I'm not saying you shouldn't react or respond. But you need to keep it in mind. Because most importantly, when you're responding, if you're going to go out there and you're going to say something publicly, if you're going to go out there and you're going to confront someone or yell at someone or do anything, Think about who that person's actually targeting and who's going to get hurt by your words and actions. Think about how you're helping or if you're not helping or if you're just doing something to make yourself feel better. Because often, most of the time, it's not about you. It's not about you. It's not about us. Okay. <laughs> That's, uh... I know that was a... It's an unhinged rant month. <laughs> but that has been weighing on me. I've been... It's just been sticking with me. And I had, like... I, I'm working on a different episode for May, and I've got something I'm kind of working on for June. Um... I just, this was weighing on me. And I wanted to talk about it. So we did. Well. I want to thank you guys for joining me for yet another month on the show. Um, please remember that this show is brought to you by my lovely patrons on Patreon. Um, I want to give a shout out to some of my patrons, uh, Lindsay Dosey, Bruce Norville, Courtney, Claire Dennis, Kayla Burkowski, Simon Geringer, and Pamela Stariak. Remember, you can support this show for even just a dollar a month. You can get episodes like this a whole week early, a whole week early. Um, just go to patreon.com slash T-R-A-E-G-O-R-N. Um, I want to remind you that we have like a great community on both our Discord uh, on the Nerd and Tie Discord, you can find an invite at nerdandtie.com slash Discord or on the uh, Nerd and Tie forums at nerdandtie.social. It's a forum we set up. We're trying to get more people to use it. I think it's really uh, a fun and great place to be. We're doing this thing called the Red Tie Club Challenge where uh, it's a private for- It's there is There is a forum you can only see if you're registered and logged into nerdandtie.social. And we are doing some fun challenges for our members that are only you can only view if you're a registered member on the forum. And that is free. Um, if you want to support the show in other ways, uh, just tell your friends about it. But also you can follow me on social media. Um, 
primarily I'm on Tumblr at traegorn.tumblr.com, but you can also find me on Twitter, or if you just call it X, Twitter <laughs> at the traegorn. Um, you can follow me on uh, st- I, I'm t- uh, TikTok. I'm on TikTok. Uh, I'm on and off on TikTok, but I'm, I'm always checking it. So uh, TikTok, and I am at traegorn. Uh, you can follow the show on Facebook at facebook.com slash bsfreewitchcraft. You can follow my fiction at facebook.com slash treydorn, T-R-A-E-D-O-R-N. Do not try to find my personal Facebook page. That's where I talk to my mom. I have to keep telling people that. <laughs> keep trying to friend me but no that's where i talk to my mom if 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 we if we've never spoken you want to speak to me go to the discord (laughs) go to the discord go to the forum those are great places to talk to me directly um uh just again uh the witch and the rose available now the sequel bloody damn right pre-order available for the ebook and the book will be out June 11th. Peregrine Lake, new comic, peregrine-lake.com, drawn by the amazing Ethan Flanagan, written by me. It's fun. It's technically the sequel to Unconventional, but you don't have to read Unconventional to read this. There, there are two, two of the main characters are two of the main characters from Unconventional, but you do not, you do not have to read Unconventional to read Peregrine Lake. Unconventional is a very different comic. Uh, but Peregrine Lake, Northwoods Gothic, fun. Um, it's going to be great. And then we are a member of the Nerd and Tie Podcast Network. There are a bunch of other shows you can listen to, uh, like uh, Cool and Unusual Punishments doing their amazing shows and series. You can listen to Hex Positive, the amazing witchcraft podcast hosted by Brie Nagarin, author of Grove Daughter Witchery. It's, if you're not listening to Hex Positive and you want witchcraft stuff, you should be listening to Hex Positive. Go listen to Hex Positive. It's a great show. You can even find an episode or two with me on there. So, you know, awesome sauce. Uh, and with that, we conclude yet another month of the show, Magickens. And remember, dirt in our fingernail, brick in our hands. I will talk to you guys next month. And buy my book. And and buy my other book. Buy print collections of my old comic. No, don't. You don't have to do that. All right. Bye.